Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's nine o'clock. Nine o'clock is with me, Father Warner, and we are in the first week in ordinary time. Today is Thursday. The text today is taken from Mark chapter one, verse forty to forty-five, and I'm entitled today's teaching, "Making It Difficult for Jesus to Walk into Our Town." So let's read the text first. A leper came to him, begging him, and kneeling, he said to him, "If you choose." You can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said, "I do choose. Be made clean." Immediately, the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. After sternly warning him, he sent him away at once, saying, "See that you say nothing to anyone, but go and show yourself to the priests, and offer for yourself cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony." But he went out and began to proclaim it freely, and to spread the word, so that Jesus could no longer go into the town openly, but stayed out in the country, and people came to him from every quarter. The Gospel of the Lord. Now, we have begun studying the Gospel of Mark. We have done uh, already uh, the first of the miracles, which is found in Mark chapter one, verse twenty-one. The man with the unclean spirit. Then we did um, Simon's mother-in-law, the healing of Simon's mother-in-law, and today we are doing Jesus cleansing a leper. Now the gospel does not tell us precisely where this miracle took place. What we do know is that Jesus is touring the neighboring towns of Capernaum after that eventful Sabbath, because we know that uh, Simon um, approaches him, and they Jesus decides. Let's go out and let's heal everybody else. Now the gospels tell us that he, Jesus came to preach the message. I want you to see this in verse thirty-eight very clearly. He answered, "Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message." So Jesus has come to proclaim the message. This message of Jesus is also accompanied by. Miracles, especially the exorcism of demons, in Mark's gospel, you'll see this very clearly. The adversary is made clear right from the start. It is Satan, and that is why the first miracle that takes place in verse uh, chapter one, verse twenty-one, is with the man with the unclean spirit. Satan in this um, in this man sitting in the synagogue. So clearly, Jesus in Mark's gospel is fighting the adversary, who is Satan. Now, while Matthew's gospel is called the teaching gospel, and I, this is a simple way to remember uh, a little bit about the gospels, Matthew's gospel is called the teaching teaching gospel. Luke is called the feeling gospel because you see the compassion of Jesus so strongly in the in Luke's gospel. Mark's gospel is called the doing gospel. Why? Because Jesus is constantly working miracles in Mark's gospel. But make no mistake, while the gospel uh, of Mark is punctuated with several miracles, the teaching and the preaching mission of Jesus is in no way diminished in Mark's gospel. Jesus will preach, he will teach, but you will see him largely doing several uh, miracles. That's why it's called the doing gospel. Now today's gospel has a leper at the heart of the miracle. Now I explained this a few days ago. Uh, about leprosy in the um, in the Bible, especially uh, at the time of Jesus, you see the term leper and leprosy, as we understand it today, could refer to uh, several skin conditions, which were all lumped together as leprosy. In all probability, what this man had was some sort of a skin ailment, or else. Uh, if he had serious leprosy, he would not have even been allowed within the walls of the village or the town. So he must have had some kind of skin ailment, uh, but it was all lumped together as uh, what we would call today Hansen's disease, and they were all looked at as lepers. Now, whatever be the case, the man, as a consequence of this leprosy, felt a sense of alienation, uh, cut off from everybody else. And look what he wants. He wants to. He desires to be healed because alienation, to be 
to be cut off from everybody else is a very cruel thing. Uh, you'll see prisoners, and it's a human rights violation, are very often left in solitary confinement where they, because the human being needs interaction. This man, because of an illness, was alienated. There is a deep humility in this man. Uh, look at the text when you see, first he kneels and then he begs for a healing. Now, while we very often empathize with those who are sick, uh, and here may I say sometimes with very annoying questions or even worse, annoying medical advice, but while by and large we empathize with those who are sick, remember that you can't totally identify with their pain and uh, suffering. I want to share with you a little example here before I go ahead. Uh, and sometimes we have to watch ourselves as to what we say in the presence of sick people. You know, wherever I'm ill, I, I find it, uh, par pardon me for saying this, I find like 40 people giving me 40 different doctors, medicines, medical advice and each one insisting that I follow it. I mean, imagine if I go to 40 doctors, I'll be confused. But I learned a, a lesson many years ago. Um, I went to Shantiya Vedna Sadhan, run by, uh, started by Dr. Lucito D'Souza, who is from our own parish here in St. Stephen's. What a wonderful man of God he is. Uh, Dr. Lucito has this beautiful home for terminally ill cancer patients. And I went there as a young priest. Uh, I, I was a seminarian then. And um, you know, you always feel compelled to say something to a sick person. These people know that they are in their terminal stage, but you know, I think I was rather foolish. And I asked a lot of invasive questions and I could see that lady getting more and more uncomfortable. And finally she said to me, she said, brother, can you do me a favor? Can you stop asking questions and can you simply say a prayer for me? And I was really uh, flabbergasted. I didn't know what to say. I was ashamed of myself. And then foolishly when I, was, when I got up, I, I said, okay, bye, I'll see you. And she looked at me once more and said, will you? You see, she understood the frailty of the nature of her disease that she could pass away anytime. And I so foolishly said, bye, I'll see you. And she said, will you? So be careful when you say things and you visit um, sick people. But coming back to our text, uh, through his suffering, the leper has not forgotten humility. Very interestingly, when you see how he approaches Jesus, there is no demand. There is just a humble request. And that's why I read it very tenderly, uh, verse 41. I read it very tenderly to you. If you choose, uh, you can make me clean. Imagine that leper looking at Jesus and saying, Lord, you know, if you choose, just you can make me clean. Now, in the face of kindness, hearts melt. And the Lord's heart was always moved with pity. Earlier when Jesus was... Uh, Jesus had healed the possessed man in the synagogue. You'll remember this text this week. Jesus used only words. I pointed out that when Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law, he used only actions. But now, now the Lord uses both words and actions in healing the leper. Perhaps this was the first time that anyone had ever touched the leper. Remember I told you that Leprosy, as understood at that time, meant that nobody would, you had to be disheveled, you had to ring a bell, you had to cover your mouth. This must have been the first time that anyone had ever touched the leper. And using both words of kindness and uh, action. When you look at your Bible in Leviticus chapter 14, uh, Leviticus 14 has a detailed list of what is required of anyone with skin ailments in order to be declared clean. And remember, the only one who could declare you clean was the priest. Now, Jesus was not some lawbreaker for the sake of simply being a rebel, as some of us uh, tend to make him out to be in our homilies. What does Jesus do? Jesus sends the man to the priest to be certified as clean. Remember, I said only the priest at that time could certify you as being clean and then also to make an offering for his cleansing as Moses had commanded the Jews to do. Now perhaps this man's joy knew no bounds. Why? Because we are told that he went out and proclaimed two things. 
he proclaimed his healing and he proclaimed his healer yeah many of us proclaim our healing we do not pro proclaim our healer we say i am well in fact sometimes we say doctor so and so made me well go to this doctor who's our divine physician proclaim your healing give credit to every human doctor and nurse but never forget our lord and this man proclaimed both his healing and his healer and what happened as a consequence he made it difficult for jesus to stay in that town because now everybody knew the man was healed and he knew who healed him they all knew jesus was behind the healing how many people go around saying jesus has healed me and if we did this imagine everybody praying to jesus hindu muslim christian parsi sikh everybody saying oh if jesus can heal i want to go to jesus so which brings me to another question because was the man disobedient to jesus because jesus pro forbade him from saying anything now i really can't answer whether he was disobedient or not but i can say this as i said i do wish the followers of jesus christ had the same chutzpa that same desire to go out and proclaim the healing and the healer you know um, many years ago i used to see ads in the newspapers uh, of healing through the intercession of saint jude Uh, because one of the things in the past the belief was that when you got healed uh, through the intercession of saint jude the promise was to publish it i don't see them anymore i don't see them anymore i'm not making a case for just publishing but the point of publishing was what evangelization perhaps the fact that our churches today are not overflowing with faith seekers is also reflective on the followers of christ you and me and not merely the failings of the institution if all of us if priests and people went out and proclaimed jesus with the same boldness perhaps we would make it very difficult for the lord to walk about freely in our town so i pray today that all of us who have received such great healing from jesus may proclaim our healing our blessings our joys but the reason behind our joys and that is our lord jesus christ and so let us pray for that the father the son and the holy spirit lord may i be your megaphone like mother mary was when she said my soul magnifies the lord mother mary made that message of an angel so loud for the whole world to see she wanted to magnify make great make big double triple the small blessings that she got in her life lord i want to magnify you today i want to praise your name for your blessings in my life for your healings in my life for your love in my life for the gifts i've received in my life for the house that i live in for the jobs that i prayed for for everything that i've asked for and you have given it lord and i have not published it i have not magnified it i have not spoken about it i have not testified about it and that is why lord the world does not know you today i want to proudly acknowledge jesus that who i am is because of you in my own life as a priest i struggled lord jesus to study as a young man i could barely pass my 7th standard but you rescued me you gave me wisdom and understanding and knowledge that no human teacher could have given and today lord you have made me a teacher of your word i want to praise and bless you lord not just of where i have come and landed but where you picked me up from and i pray lord jesus that all of us who have received a blessing today may testify it perhaps in the comment section perhaps to their friends perhaps just pick up the phone and randomly tell somebody i want to share with you what jesus did in your loving name lord i make this prayer that we may testify testify again and again to your love amen The Lord be with you and may almighty God bless you the father the son 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Leave your testimonies, my dear friends, in the comment section today. Share this video with your friends, like this video and do subscribe to this channel if you haven't done it. I want to thank our regular viewers for constantly sharing these teachings uh, with your friends. If you want to receive the text version of these uh, teachings, uh, send me your, your, uh, your uh, name and telephone number by WhatsApp and I will add you to our broadcast list. I send it out every mo early each morning. So you can also store these uh, teachings uh, which are in its text version with you and always refer to them when you want to mark uh, certain things that I've taught you in your Bible. So God bless you. Have a nice day. On behalf of Lenny and Nadia Suarez and the children of the Love, Joy, Hope Foundation, I want to thank you for reaching out to our children, for providing meals for them. In case you have a birthday, a wedding anniversary, something in your family and you'd like to share a little of that joy with our children in Goa, please send me a WhatsApp message on 9820242151. And thank you once again for all of you who have also been supporting financially this ministry. I acknowledge your kindness and your gratitude. You can just write to me anytime you want. God bless you. Remember once again, avoid calling me up. It's very hard to take a call, but do send me a WhatsApp message and I will respond. Have a nice day, everybody.